Greetings, Vicarious Sports Entertainment Simulation and Emulation fans. I'm your humble host, JP, and welcome to RPG Debris, Tabletop Trash or Treasure, Pro Power Championship Wrestling. You all remember Pro Power Championship Wrestling, right? It was copyright 1994, Pro Action Sports Entertainment. Don't bother looking it up on the net. The whole shebang has apparently gone tits up at some point. I did find a couple of mentions of people remembering or mentioning or possibly fondly remembering it, though as I'm about to get into shortly, they were mistaken if that was the case. At any rate, I apparently ordered this from a wrestling magazine and it came in a simple large white 9x12 envelope, a heavy envelope, in fact much heavier than the Simcoe wrestling game and it was in a freaking box. But PPCW came with 40 wrestler pages, plus the four pages of rules and a few extra pages of special rules for feuds and such. You know when you buy a microwave cheeseburger that looks like it's made out of sirloin, 10 pounds of cheese and fairy laughter, or maybe one of those cheap swimming pools, those tw $20 ones that look like they inexplicably can accommodate the entire population of Grenada. You know better, but you buy them anyway, just in case it's true. And you get the package open, and surprise, it was a load of horse shit. The burger is the same thickness and size as a 50 cent piece, and roughly the same color, and that's after it's cooked. Or the pool can maybe fit your little cousin's left leg in it. Either the picture of, of the pool on the box is a damned lie, a, a much larger version, or a shrink ray has been used on the people in the photo. I'm not sure where I was... Oh, yeah. Uh, I don't know how much I paid for this wrestling game, and this time I'm thankful, as I'd probably be pissed if I remembered, though it probably wasn't that high since I never had a bunch of money when I was younger, so... I would only have gone for something reasonably priced. Oh, the irony of that phrase when looking at this game. So, on to this game. The instruction sheet actually has a line art representation of the different sections of the wrestler sheet and gives a brief description of the meaning of the sections, with wrestlers having pin and submission stats for singles, tag, and championship matches. Strangely, the rules take the time to specify sleeper holds are pin moves, while cobra clutches are submission moves. Now the fact is, both moves, when used as finishers, uh, most typically are used to win by causing the opponent to pass out, causing the referee to be able to check for unresponsiveness three times, lifting the wrestler's arm and letting it drop. This is actually a TKO, or technical knockout move, neither pin nor submission, though I will concede a Cobra Clutch does occasionally garner a submission, um, but this, the point is, there are thousands of wrestling moves, uh, they're uh, incalculable, and while it's possible they're using these two as templates to guide players for other moves, the fact that the game designers had no clue about TKO results and referred to sleepers as pin moves is a blunder. And also that it kind of uh, shows that they had no real plans to, to allow a whole lot of customization for the players. They, they, they obviously didn't want players making their own wrestlers or, or, and they weren't going to go very far into moves and things like that that the players could come up with or devise. I don't know. It just seems it seems very closed. Uh, to their credit, though, the rules do go right into get Graham Lineheart and the Huntsman and let's have a match. But at the same time, this also directly highlights the main problem with the game, which are only minor things like the way the rules work. If you can ignore that, then it's a pretty good game, I suppose. But you roll no, two normal-sided dice, known to most gamers as 2d6, and choose any of your eight categories on your wrestler sheet, from scientific, aggressive, brawling, punishment, scientific offense, which I'm not really sure why that's not scientific, 
but it's not. Ropes, down, and pin slash submit. All very well and good, except uh, I, I see the dice roll notation, 2 to 12, listed for each move. Are there no other numbers? No required rolls? No chance to hit? Power level? Damage? Fatigue? Huh. Okay. So, yeah. So once you have a move category and a roll, your opponent then rolls on his defense, which can be reverse, totally avoid, attempt to avoid, and absorb. Or, if you're a humanoid from Earth, as most of us are, I'd put it uh, as uh, a little bit clearer. I would say reverse, evade, partial impact, and full impact, because that is what those terms actually mean in the game. Attempt to avoid actually means the opponent tried to block or get out of the way or whatever, but wasn't quite successful and caught at least some of the force of the maneuver. I, I don't know why they use this attempt to avoid and absorb. and That, it, that sounds like it means something else. Absorb seems like it would mean like a no-sell. Like you took the, the impact of the maneuver and it didn't affect you, but that's not what it meant. It meant you took the full impact of it. So I, I just I think that was just a really poor wording, and nobody ever changed it. So you might be wondering if the moves have no damage rating, what effect does the defense result have? That's actually a really good question, and the answer is unfortunately not nearly as good. To go for a pin, you apparently have to chain together moves that result in either attempt to avoid or absorb at least three times in a row against your opponent. Since everything is pretty much dumb luck by the dice roll, your opponent will maybe be pinned and maybe not at any time. Uh, this is pretty much out of your hands. Uh, it's pretty much pure chance. This is the dice equivalent of a video game button masher that requires no skill or even paying attention to the screen, simply hitting the button in a frenzy for a prolonged amount of time. Once you do get to try for a pin, you roll two dice, and if your roll equals a number listed in the pin or sub section of your opponent's sheet, you win. Otherwise, they escape or kick out. The thing is, you don't take turns in this game. So until the opponent gets a reverse on their defense, you remain on the offensive. So it's random and one-sided, but on the other hand, it's insultingly simplistic with no actual damage or impact ratings, making choosing an offense category pointless since they're all mechanically identical, and very little significance to the defense roles exists, uh, plus being uh, nearly pinned multiple times does nothing. It doesn't increase any fatigue level, there's no penalty for anything that changes your roles, it doesn't change your initiative or roll off, as they call it, uh, because the only way to change is to get some sort of a defense where you reverse. It's like if you played a Zelda game where all the enemies dropped keys, but all the treasure you found was in open buckets littered around the countryside. It's, there's just no reason. Wrestlers also have an injury chart, also uh, numbered 2 to 12, and when a wrestler rolls absorb, on his defense, uh, on a move that targets his head, the other wrestler rolls dice, and if the roll equals one of his injured numbers, one of the opponent's injured numbers, the recipient is bloodied, which can have some in-game effects, such as, so especially in a first blood match, which means the opponent would lose, because he bled first. Now, speaking of that, there are brief rules given for different match types, from tag and battle royal, to first blood and the usually glossed over I quit match but there are actually rules for the I quit match which that's kind of unique to this game I'll give it that uh, the rules state the first ten wrestlers in an addition will be faces and the remaining ten will be heels but my addition came with forty wrestlers so apparently they discovered people didn't want their bullshit made up wrestlers especially if they had to pay for them the wrestler sheets are not bad, having name, height, weight,
weight, hometown, nickname, and finisher, and a mini bio, and a picture. The quality which ranges from not bad to quite bad. Ragman is pretty cool looking. And a few of the other ones are okay, but most of the artwork is junior high level. And not the awesome guy that you knew was going to work for Marvel or DC, but the other junior high level type artists in school. Uh, finally, each wrestler sheet has two grids for wins and loses. Not losses, loses. <sighs> the sad thing is, my edition, which I'm pretty sure there was only one after they realized nobody wanted any more of their wrestlers, uh, my edition came with a note saying, due to a technical error, read, some dumbass forgot to add it, Trasher Tower's finisher on his bio lacks a description. A running forearm. So, they realized there was an error there on that particular wrestler sheet. But not that something that's on every damn sheet is spelled wrong. <sighs> there are various charts for feuds, ringside allies, outside the ring, and other situations. But they're all 2d6 rolls, and I just have this feeling they're all pretty damn random. And no matter how even halfway passable they seem, they're even worse. Overall, this has a very enthusiastic, young fan vibe to it. Lots of vague ideas on presentation. It has at least some idea of style and extras, being the wins loses grid, bios, and especially the artwork. It's not great, but it is there, and it is effort. If it weren't for the artwork and bios, I'd honestly give this a 1. But with 40 included wrestlers, and a fairly dense four-page set of rules and charts. This just barely scrapes by with two out of five steel folding chairs. Thanks for joining us, fans. I'm JP, and be sure to join us for the next exciting installment.